Welcome to Excel and Business Math video number 25. Hey, in this video, we got to see how to use our percentage formulas that we've been learning about for videos 18 to 24 to help us calculate a budgeted forecast for next year. Now, we're going to see the same income statement example that we saw in video number 22. But what we're going to do here is we're going to take the numbers and use one, two, three. These three percentage formulas to help us estimate a budget or a forecast for next year. Now let's go over to the sheet Cat Forecast. Now what do we have on this sheet? Caterpillar has all of the numbers for the year 2015. These are the actual numbers. And we want to use these as an estimate to figure out what we think our numbers will be for next year. Now, the way we get to do this, or step one of our one, two, three different steps, is that we want to compare each one of the expense accounts to the revenue. Now, we saw this back in video number 22. This is called a common sized income statement. In that example, we talked about comparing each one of these parts to the whole and using those percentages to compare between time periods and between companies. But here, we're going to use the same exact formula, the rate formula, part divided by base, to estimate for each expense how many pennies for every $1 that comes into the company should go to each one of these expense categories. Now, as we talked about back in video number 22, these are, in essence, consolidated expense accounts. The company would do this process, meaning these formulas here, internally, and they would have all of the different expense categories. But the math behind it for this smaller example is exactly the same. All right, so we're going to try our formula. There's the revenue for the year, and we're going to compare that number and all of the other expenses, total expenses, and even our profit to the total revenue. So you ready? Equals arrow over, that's the part, divided by arrow, arrow, and I'm going to hit the F4 key because that's locked. That's the total or the base that each one of the individual parts will be compared to. Control Enter. One, because of course any number divided by itself is one. But when I copy it down, go to the last cell, hit F2 to verify the cell references, enter, and then delete this one right here. Now I have each expense account as a percentage or a decimal of the revenue. Now really, what this means and the way we want to think about this is if I do this division, F2, notice there's the part, there's the whole. When I do that division, that means in the numerator, the top of the division, I get 14.8 pennies. In the denominator, there's $1 of revenue. A great way to think of these is for every $1 that comes into the cash register for CAT, how many pennies went to each item? Well, notice down here, 5.3 about pennies went to profit, but the rest of those pennies for that $1 went to running the business. Now, guess what? We're going to use these to estimate next year. Now, we're going to use the unrounded numbers for our calculations, but I do want to add percentage number formatting. So I'm going to highlight the column come up to the drop down and use percentage with two decimals. Now, when I apply that, of course, we all know by this time in this class that that just displays it a certain way. Those unrounded decimals are still underneath and will be used in our calculations. Now, before we can estimate our expenses using our new percentages, we need to estimate the revenue for this year. Now, the company went out and estimated what they think the percentage increase in revenue will be. This is based on projected demand for their bulldozers and excavators. So down here, we're going to use the formula to calculate the end. That means this is the begin revenue last year's. This is the end. That's the percentage increase. So we can use 1 plus our rate of change. There it is. 
to get our rate. Equals, and I'm going to click on total revenue from last year, times in parentheses 1 plus. There's the rate of change. When I add 1, that's the rate. And that's what we use to get the end amount, begin times rate. So that will be our total revenue that we're going to use for all of these calculations. Remember, what does that mean? 14.78 pennies for every $1 of revenue. But now we're going to use the revenue from here. This year's revenue, and we're going to need to lock that. So as we copy down, every cell looks at this year's revenue. So I hit the F4 key times. And now I'm going to use how many pennies for this particular expense for every $1 of revenue. And we're not going to round. Formatting will be sufficient to display down to the dollar in our case. Control Enter. And watch what happens when I copy this down. It wrecked the formatting. Anytime you copy, it copies the formatting and the formula. No problem. We love this little smart tag. I hover my cursor and click that arrow there to get my drop down. And I want to say fill without formatting. That is beautiful. Now I want to go to the last cell and hit F2 to verify that the cell references are correct. That's how many pennies per $1 of net income we had last year. And when we multiply it by our total revenue for this year, we get our estimate for net income. All right, so we used our rate formula to calculate expenses as a percentage of revenue, our end formula to calculate the revenue for this year, and our part, rate times base, to calculate the estimated expenses for this year. All right, now let's go look at another example over on Amazon Forecast. This is the same income statement we used back in video 22. But we'll create our formula, equal sign. There's the numerator, the part divided by the whole or the total, that's the denominator. I hit the F4 key. Control Enter. I already had percentage number formatting there. And copy it down. Now I have how many pennies for that particular expense for every $1 of revenue. Now we can calculate the revenue for 2016 equals, there's our begin, times in parentheses 1 plus. And look at that, Amazon assumed that revenue is going to increase by 25%. Close parentheses and Enter. So there's the revenue that we can now use for this year. Equals, there's the base for this year, total revenue, F4 to lock it, because we need that locked all the way down, times, and there's cost of goods sold, expense as a percentage of revenue, as a relative cell reference, Control Enter. Copy it down. Point to the Smart Tag. Fill without formatting. Go to the last cell and hit F2. I'm verifying that the cell references are working. Now I'm going to come back over here and F2. I didn't verify this. Sure enough, that's correct. And I didn't delete this. I don't want that. Delete. All right, that was how to use our rate, end, and part formulas to create a budgeted forecast for next year. You have one homework problem. It's a Microsoft income statement, and you're going to forecast the next year's income statement. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including a quick, short little hint, video 26, about percentage increase and decrease. All right, we'll see you next video.